Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fintech Festival India's Mumbai Micro Experience. Yes, we are back in Mumbai with our 10th episode of Fintech Festival India with our digital main event on March 1st till March 3rd, just around the corner. Customers appreciated online shopping when it initially became popular in India because of the variety and ease. However, they soon encountered issues with payment gateways as, a, as the cart abandonment uh, rates uh, skyrocketed. E-commerce platforms began to feel the heat. Uh, this is when the cash on delivery came into play. Consumers gravitated towards it because there was no need to pay upfront or provide bank account or credit card information. Because there was less possibility of being misled, online buyers began purchasing from lesser known sites. Then followed the government strike to eliminate cash from the economy. And again, there was a desire for a solution that provided the convenience of cash on delivery without the participation of physical cash. In comes buy now, pay later or BNPL. Although buy now, pay later services have been around for a while, it was the pandemic that had propelled this, its adoption globally. In a country like India that has over a billion people and a large credit averse population, BNPL is quite simply disruptive. In fact, some of the biggest players in BNPL with their highest expected growth potential are in India. Now, buy now, pay later has made its news as changing consumer behavior creates a business potential. With a combination of interest-free credit, zero documentation, and easy integration with their checkout processes, BNPL packaging makes it tempting to the client. The cash on delivery, which can be seen as the first generation of BNPL in its own right, is dead and rising from the ashes of uh, cash and delivery is the phoenix that is BNPL that as we know it today. And discussing this meteoric rise of BNPL, we have with us Ms. Richa Mukherjee, member face, public policy and uh, corporate affairs at PayU India, who will be moderating this session. And uh, Richa is joined on the panel by Mr. Amol Varange, Director of Investments, Omidyar Network India, Mr. Gaurav Hinduja, Co-Founder and Managing Director of Capital Float, Mr. Sabya Sachi Goswami, Chief Business Officer of Perfios, and uh, completing this panel is Ms. Supasta Taku, Co-Founder and Chief Operating Officer with Mobiquet. Uh, with that said, the panel is yours, Richard. Please take it forward. Thank you, Amit, for the wonderful context setting and very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and my peers from the financial fraternity. Today, we are going to discuss an alternate payments method that is fast becoming the mainstay in the consumer credit business buy now pay later welcome you all to the session as we know the popularity of bnpl or buy now pay later has increased tremendously with the onset of pandemic the demand for faster easier and convenient loans further increased the consumer behavior towards e-commerce and broader spectrum of online shopping this naturally put a boost to the bnpl based services and along the way it also helped in addressing crucial issues of financial inclusion access to credit and financial literacy if you put some data around this uh, landscape there is massive growth opportunity in this sector with estimates such as uh, bnpl market is expected to reach 45 to 50 billion dollar by 2026 from the present 3 and a half billion dollar um, which is staggering 15x growth and the users that are expected to rise uh, in the country by 2026 is about 80 to 100 million customers from 10, 10 million customers at the moment. In terms of category, fashion emerges as the top PNPL category in India in 2021. Um, and the COVID-19 pandemic has sent more and more people towards online shopping. The demand for easy loans has driven more players to enter the BNPL market. Fintechs, as we know, they are issuing BNPL cards to push usage at offline stores and new pay later cards are also making their foray into people's wallets who don't even have a credit history. The sector continues to invest and attract uh, investor interest in recent times. And we have seen several fundings in this space in recent times. Uh, in addition to this, BNPL, as we know, is driving financial inclusion. Uh, if I put some data and figures around it, uh, according to World Bank Global Findex report, 80% of Indian adults have bank accounts. And of that, only 48% of Indian accounts um, are, of that 48% are inactive bank accounts. Uh, out of 900 million banked Indians, only 30 million people are unique credit card holders. Therefore, with this staggering country size of powers, as per the above statistics, not much has been achieved in terms of financial inclusion. 
Hence, in India, BNPL has been established to bridge the gap in consumer lending and finance industry. It is not just an agile and swift payment solution. It has also made purchasing products and services which were earlier considered out of bounds by majority uh, of the population. It has made them all very much affordable. In terms of the regulatory landscape in this, uh, uh, in this segment, if you see, uh, RBI had set up the working group, um, you know, late last year to discuss the crucial points uh, involving the safety of consumer data, controlling illegal activities and charges and funds transfer. Uh, they have been seeking details from NBFCs about their BNPL arrangements with e-commerce players. The working group is also recommending that all balance sheet lending through lending apps be restricted to entities regulated and authorized by RBI, such as banks and NBFCs. So with this, uh, with this um, landscape, I want to dive into the panel discussion with my panelists. Um, I want to start by asking a common question to all of them, just to understand what is the BNPL landscape as they understand and how they are doing the business in this segment. I'll start with um, uh, Amol. Um, if you can explain in simple terms the business and revenue model and what are the underlying technologies being used behind BNPL. Amol? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Amit. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, I'm Amol. I represent Omidya Network India, which is an impact investment firm which has deployed close to $450 million in India. Uh, coming to the question at hand, so BNPL is quite old, right? Going back to so many years, uh, in the 80s and 90s, we had Nordstrom and other big box retailers in the US issue credit cards, right? Uh, pretty good from a merchant's perspective. They give them insights into customer behavior, was a de facto loyalty card, but a mess to manage on the financial services side, right? Or the finance risk, which is where the fintechs have stepped up and which is what is the BNPL market now, right? Uh, so the business model is quite simple. Uh, it's a point of sale installment loan. Customer pays small percentage upfront, may or may not pay. Uh, the rest uh, depends in the West. It's usually a month to a three month tenor, generally weekly or uh, uh, once in two weeks kind of a product. In India, the tenors could be anywhere from six months uh, to a year or even lesser. Uh, interest free period for a start. Uh, but then, of course, uh, the interest kicks in uh, if there are delayed payments, right? So that's the typical business model. Uh, the revenue model, again, quite simple. Uh, from the merchant side, there's a merchant subvention uh, because uh, BNPL allows access to credit to customers, which enables higher sales. From the customer side, generally, there's an interest fee period. But beyond that, there could be processing fees. Uh, there could be interest fees if you revolve or, uh, or extend the period. There could be late fees and so on. On the tech part, I think that's the key differentiator. Uh, so there are two, three elements to it. One is uh, the acceptance network. So being on the checkout uh, of the retailer uh, online, and of course now we are seeing offline as well. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's very non-trivial. Uh, uh, being on an Amazon checkout page, uh, getting there takes a lot of work. I'm sure my fellow panelists would agree with me here uh, because a customer drop off at that point, it's pretty disastrous, uh, uh, both for the merchant as well as uh, for the financial service provider. So I think the ability to have that seamless integration with the merchant. Uh, second, on the customer end, where right from the signups uh, to the approval of credit, uh, to the disbursement, and also at some point, uh, the collection has to be pretty seamless, instantaneous. Uh, the signups should not require the customer to go to multiple uh, pages if possible and so on, right? So I think technology is where this really differentiates itself from other forms of products. Uh, but this is broadly what the business is, uh, what are the revenue streams and the technology. Thank you, Amol, for that. And uh, I do understand seamless integration is the key to going forward in this space. Uh, I would take this question to Gaurav and if you can please explain us about this. Uh, thanks, Richard. Thanks, Amit. So I'll carry on from what Amol said because he captured it fairly well. So I think there are three aspects to the business model of buy now, pay later, three types of players in the market today. So one, you have folks who are issue a card and you can use that card at a merchant. Uh, customers in this case are typically acquired either through digital marketing or various other means. 
The second is again, whether you're a wallet or any other instrument where you've acquired millions of customers and then you can send those customers to a merchant. Or the third, which is what we do, is where we underwrite at the point of checkout. And as I'm all said, with the, taking the example of an Amazon, when a person is shopping online, uh, we are able to underwrite him or her in a, in a matter of two to three seconds and be able to provide them a credit option, which is seamless and as convenient like a payment option, but allows the person uh, uh, either three months, six months or nine months to be able to make the payment uh, and also then allows them to use that line as they check out uh, when they continue to shop. So uh, what we actually go after is the customers, like you rightly said, Richard, who don't have a credit card. So there are typically about 100 million online shoppers today in India. About 30, 35 million have a credit card. The balance 60 to 65 million is what uh, I think most of us are targeting uh, because we believe that buy now, pay later is an interesting first credit product uh, and a stepping stone to, let's say, a credit card or a personal loan, anything else in the future. Uh, simply because it's a bite-sized credit that can be delivered efficiently as long as you kind of can keep the NPAs and the losses low. Right. Thank you, Gaurav. I mean, you put it very succinctly, uh, bite-sized credit and a stepping stone to the, you know, the formal credit card, if anybody wants to get onto that. Uh, I'll uh, take this question to Pasna and would, would love to hear your views, Pasna. Yeah, so I think my co-panelists have already, uh, you know, described this well. I think I'll just uh, give a slightly different opinion to, you know, how Amol had positioned it. I think that in India, uh, as opposed to globally, where buy now, pay later is replacing a credit card, I think in India, buy now, pay later will actually be the first form of credit or alternative form of credit, you know, that most Indians will get the first chance, uh, you know, to use credit. And to that extent, you know, six months and, uh, you know, one year kind of products, while there are several such products, even three months, uh, six months, nine months, I think more and more smaller ticket size and shorter duration uh, is where we will see many more Indians, uh, you know, trying credit for the first time. I'll explain what I mean. So see, credit cards in India are available today. Uh, about 50, 55 million credit cards issued to about 30, 35 million unique Indians. And uh, in contrast to that, about 300 million Indians are paying digitally. Yeah. Uh, so they are paying with their own money from their own bank account using whatever, uh, you know, form factor, debit card, payment app, et cetera, et cetera. And these users are spending anywhere in the range of 3,000 to 5,000 rupees every month on their digital spends. And I think that's where uh, we believe, at least from a MobiQuick perspective, that the credit pie will expand because um, how many times can you buy a television or a laptop or a smartphone uh, in a year? A couple of times you can buy a high value uh, product for your home, but uh, daily life spends are not going anywhere. And I think just like elite Indians are used to using a credit card for all their uh, you know, monthly spends, we believe that's how digitally transacting users who are obviously, uh, we have 300 million next few years, this number is easily going to double. So a lot more people will become upwardly mobile on their smartphones. And I think that's where we will see more and more larger adapt adoption, uh, you know, to buy now, pay later or small ticket credit products, which will then bring these people into the ambit of credit where they can have access to more credit products once they are credit tested. Thank you, Pasna. I'll take this to Sabisachi. Your views, please. Uh, thanks, Richard. Thanks, Amit. And uh, already my previous co-panelist has spoken enough about this. But just to add two cents of my views. Uh, see, first, it helps kind of uh, expand the spending power for things like, which we are not imagining. I think it's happening already globally. Uh, and, and probably we saw early trend uh, during COVID uh, for purchases like groceries, personal care, other essentials. And, and this helped kind of managing uh, a better cash flow, you know, and, and this specifically, I saw this trend. This is my personal observation during COVID. Uh, so what it means is it, it actually allows the quick and easy access uh, to instant credit. And this is kind of pushing the financial inclusion story that, the India is trying to build, you know, and, and with abysmal uh, kind of 3% credit card penetration that we have in our country uh, and, and 
what I read from all the research report, the household debt to GDP is uh, just about 12%. So, and, and, and the retail market is growing uh, at an online at about 4% rate, which is supposed to be about $820 billion. Uh, there is immense scope for BNP. So I, I see uh, the, the market is there. Uh, the right technologies are coming in place. The real-time underwriting solutions are available. And already the players in this space have built the uh, wonderful, beautiful experience for the customers. So everything is poised to grow. I think that's where we are. And, and if I can just add two, two examples globally, I mean, I, I saw uh, a firm who, which has done the IPO uh, recently and about raised about $1.2 billion. And similarly, Klarna, uh, which was a Swedish startup not very long ago, uh, kind of valued at $40 billion. That itself saves the potential of this and, and how India can grow. So I'm sure uh, many excite, I mean, exciting times ahead and we'll all see a lot of new stories growing in this case. Right, thanks Abhisachi and thank you to all the panelists. I do understand that, uh, you know, the buy now, pay later, it is coming along with multiple use cases and this is going to be go-to-market payment solution in near future. Uh, by the and definitely the credit market size is going to increase. That's what we can foresee because of the convenience, cheaper and instant credit that it will be uh, providing to the to the consumer section. Um, I will move on to the specific questions I have for each of the panelists. Uh, I want to pose this question to Amol. Amol, as an investor and as an industry expert, how do you expect the future innovation in this? Uh, BNPL segment to phase out and do you think it will become more consumer centric and well, what is your perception how it is going to evolve from here? Sure. So uh, look the pandemic has kind of compressed the consumer's digital journey maybe a two-year journey into two months right or maybe a five-year journey into six months right. On the other hand banks and credit card companies are not able to keep up with this pace. Right, of digitization and innovation. So at the highest level, the way I think about it is BNPL removes the friction of issuing a financial product right, in some form. Right? Uh, if you take that as an overarching uh, principle, uh, I see innovations in broadly three buckets. Uh, and of course, would love to hear from the operators themselves. Uh, but from my vantage point, I see the first bucket being acceptance networks, uh, wider acceptance networks, uh, both online as well as offline. Uh, right, which could mean uh, how do you utilize the card networks? How do you utilize UPI uh, uh, for these kind of products? Uh, that's bucket number one. Bucket number two would be product innovation. Uh, under that, uh, I think Upasana already mentioned this, uh, the new use cases, right? The product can evolve right from a credit line on tap to let's say a two-year product. Uh, new use cases could be your bill payments, subscription. So let's say a big basket daily, for example, right? Or uh, your uh, uh, grocery, food, or travel bills uh, accumulated together and paid in a month. I mean, Ola Money uh, did that many years back, uh, right? Uh, second, uh, I would expect a lot of innovation around reward points. Uh, BNPL companies will be up against new card companies uh, who also have customer delight uh, at their front and center. Uh, and also you have to compete with the credit card companies and the cashback. So I expect innovation around that front. Uh, I also see application to B2B businesses. Uh, we already see that in Kirana, uh, where you have the likes of Rupify ePay later embedded uh, within the uh, purchase chains. We see these applications in Agri, uh, where you can even buy cows and pay for them later uh, if you get to go to uh, uh, some of these agri tech uh, platforms. Right? Uh, the last uh, bucket, uh, I would say there would be newer players. Uh, banks and financial institutions would want a piece of this action. Uh, in what shape and form we'll see, probably through partnerships with firms. Uh, for them, somewhere it would be kind of bridging the delta between the credit card users they have and the overall customer uh, 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 customer population that they have, right? Probably a top bank would have 25, 30 uh, million customers, but would still have only five, six million credit cards, right? Uh, maybe this is a product which bridges some of that uh, uh, delta. Uh, so these are the three uh, broad buckets of innovation I would expect. Uh, in the future. 
Thank you, Amol. This is very interesting of what you mentioned in terms of the three areas in terms of innovation, the acceptance network, product innovation, and newer players. And I, I feel that the key is uh, to go into the newer areas, which has not been tapped so far, especially for BNPL segment, which you were highlighting in terms of buying a cow. So very, very interesting uh, to know all of that. And that would be the key to for, uh, for any organization to take this product forward. Uh, I want to ask a question to Gaurav. Uh, Gaurav, how do you envision the scope of BNPL and retail market and trade shops going forward? And do you believe SME financing via BNPL can be the guiding model for our country's lending uh, lending landscape in general? Yeah, so see, today a lot of the buy now, pay later players are focused in the online world and focused with merchants of the, you know, typically mid to larger size merchants. Yeah. I think with obviously UPI gaining popularity, uh, there is obviously an option to kind of, as a whole and Upasana said, take the credit line and allow the person to check out when they are shopping at a small Kirana store using any interoperable UPI. And I think that is something that is obviously a lot of people are working on and it's going to be a very exciting space. The question still remains is, uh, is there any ec economics in that model? Because there's really no MDR there. Uh, and so I think, uh, I don't think anyone has found a suitable answer to that. Uh, but that said, I think, uh, you know, I think buy now, pay later per se, along with UPI is, has already revolutionized SME lending at the Kirana store or the small retail store, right? So I think that, that evolution is already well underway. And I think buy now, pay later will, will make a small dent in that, or rather I would say a small addition to that, uh, because UPI is really what is changing uh, the landscape for lending for these Kirana stores. And so allowing them to offer buy now pay later credit to their customers is where I think the interesting opportunity is. Uh, and I think that's the one that uh, hopefully all of us can get right once we start to focus away from the online merchants. Thanks, Gaurav. I can already see many of the questions coming from the audience. So I will be quick in asking questions to my panelists. Sabisachi, I move to you. Uh, if you can tell me, tell the audience as well, how essential is the use of data and analyzing best case scenarios for BNPL businesses? The uh, right use of data is like paramount to any of the BNP players uh, that has a long-term vision to stay in the game. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I say this is because broadly speaking, I can divide it in two sets. First, to get a, a millennial or a consumer in a splurge driven economy uh, enforced by kind of COVID-led online purchases, tackles different sets of data. Uh, second, to have repeat business from the same consumer over time while managing the health of the book tackles a very different set of data. Yep. At the moment, uh, what we see globally, the market is tackling the first scenario beautifully. Alternate data to name a few like web behavior, app behavior, location behavior, etc. And everything else around customer experience uh, kind of uh, can be a beacon to small ticket size loan. Uh, but the moment you move towards maturity of the customer relationship uh, with regards to higher loan size or higher repeat value or over health, the BN players will gradually bring in the elements of fundamentals of credit decision. Uh, uh, I mean, there is no gain saying there uh, because the ability and intent to pay will be the fundamentals that uh, no lenders would like to obviate. Right. And which is what we say or are seeing that uh, the BNPL businesses uh, will see that there will be additional elements of hyper-personalized offerings, uh, which they will offer to their customers in addition to just offering the checkout finance. So there is immense importance of data uh, here. And, and if I can take an example, I mean, if you see Apple has already announced uh, uh, with uh, in collaboration with Goldman, that they are uh, launching something soon. So anyways, I mean, finally, as a cliche as it may sound, uh, I think in uh, India context, A will also be a game changer in the times to come for the BNPL market. That's what I would say. Yes, absolutely. Data is the key. Data is the key, of course. Uh, with this, I want to move to Upasna. Upasna, uh, what, what do you think is the main reason for the exponential demand in the BNPL segment? Do you think digitization and digital inclusion is a party to this course? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, as I uh, heard a lot of my panelists talk about, uh, you know, there's a very huge credit gap um, in the country right now with the number of people that are, you know, buying in stores, physical stores, online stores, uh, and most of them are using their own savings from their bank accounts. And I think because uh, large traditional financial institutions, you know, their cost of user acquisition, 
and their uh, you know um, focus on uh, credit scoring the user based on bureau data i think those are the two areas there isn't much data available for most indians outside of the top 70 100 million indians on the credit bureaus so paucity of data cost of user acquisition and mass i think these are some of the reasons why traditionally financial institutions whether it's banks or credit card companies or nbfcs larger ones have been focusing on you know the top 50 to 70 million indians in terms of their uh, economic earning and spending potential and therefore everybody else uh, you know has not been having any access to regular credit apart from let's say a vehicle loan or a off and on consumer durable loan and because the market is so credit starved and because the market is full of young people you know so uh we have many more people wielding smartphones wanting to um, not go through via you know lots of documentation and quick and fast digital onboarding in journeys and i think that's where uh you know fintechs uh, are making a huge difference and of course we are seeing banks and larger institutions also rapidly adopt digital thanks to the covid pandemic in the last two years i think because of all of these reasons all the macro factors in india are in the favor of uh you know digital india and as more and more people are going digital india you know first they consume content then they do basic payment transactions and then they start uh, you know moving towards having access to financial services so definitely i expect uh, india to be a very hot market in terms of digital credit uh, for the next 5 years which is why we are seeing so many um you know large institutions focusing on digitization uh indian startups of all scale and sizes rising to the occasion as well as uh, you know many globals trying to enter the market as well right thanks upasna and uh, i'm also seeing that bnpl is also being portrayed as and to a, to an extent that is right also it is being projected as something uh, which is um, uh, you know doing more on the financial inclusion front and uh, i have a question on that to amol uh, do you think there is a correlation and impact of bnpl on financial inclusion amol sure uh, so we are domedia network india are impact investors and we track this very closely so i'm glad uh, there is this question uh, so i'll take two buckets one is the customer bucket and second is the uh, merchant bucket uh, within the customer bucket uh, three points uh, which provide evidence of uh, uh, financial inclusion uh which is uh, due to this model right uh, so the first is uh, uh, affordability to customers uh helping them build familiarity with digital credit uh, or for that matter even formal financial institutions right away from the informal system uh which otherwise would have been their first port of call uh, uh to get credit uh second point uh, when we look at uh, data across our portfolio companies and we are investors in one of the biggest pn player players in india just money uh, we see a high proportion are new to credit and thin file customers uh, that of course number could vary depending on the market conditions uh, but we have seen numbers range from a third uh, to 40 50% of uh, the book being these uh, kind of customers uh, the third point uh, being uh, the extension towards productive use cases uh, away from just discretionary spending we see education Uh, as a big new use case uh, we see evs uh, for your work commute uh, as a big use case uh, we see healthcare uh, as a big use case also the opportunity for these customers to access more positive financial products which are cross sold by the bnpl players case in point being insurance uh, we see huge i mean we see 50% plus attachment rates uh, for insurance products which otherwise these guys would the customers would uh, find it difficult uh, to access right so on the customer front uh, these are the uh, things that we think uh, help inclusion uh, coming to the merchant standpoint uh, we already spoke about applicability to b2b uh, and different segments such as agri uh, kirana uh, there is historical evidence uh, at least in the west where research has been carried out that uh, bnpl increases both the conversion ratio as well as the ticket price conversion ratio between 20 to 30% and the ticket price between 30 to 50% right now what are, what of this translates to india is yet to be seen uh, but generally given there are so many smaller brands d2c is a big growing market 
who wants to compete with the likes of Amazon, Flipkart, and and really reach customers online, uh, we do feel BNPL has a role uh, uh, in promoting these small homegrown D two C businesses as well. Thank you, Amol. Uh, some very valid points there, and um, yeah, fully support those points. Uh, I would uh, move to Gaurav in the interest of time. Gaurav, what do you think are the current norms, asks and practices of onboarding a customer and also merchants like KYC, et cetera, in this uh, yeah. BNPL space? That's, I think, a very important question, which I, I think, you know, what's been happening, at least in India, is uh, people are taking two approaches to this, right? Folks, few companies believe that this is a payments product and so have kind of decided to bypass entire KYC and actually do entire BNPL without doing any KYC or any underwriting or reporting to the bureau or any such kind of regulatory measures. Uh, however, there are obviously a lot of folks who have taken the right way and, and do it with KYC, with bureau reporting, loan agreements, et cetera, and follow all the norms laid out by the RBI. Uh, we are of the belief, obviously, that this is a credit product. Yes, you want to build it in a convenient manner, like a payment product. End of the day, this is a credit product. It is a loan, whether it's a 30-day loan, 15-day loan, or a nine months loan. And so all KYC norms laid out by the RBI need to be followed uh, and bureau reporting needs to be done. Uh, we've already seen that in the West, uh, regulators have already come down harshly on people who are trying to avoid KYC and do this. Uh, I think uh, I think as Amol mentioned in the beginning or Sabdisachi mentioned in the beginning that uh, the regulator in India also has started to kind of look at, uh, you know, uh, companies that are doing this without KYC in India and understanding what the right feasibility of that model is. Uh, so I think we are definitely going to see uh, uh, the regulator getting more involved as this product scales for a lot of players. I think the second thing is, one is around KYC, but the second thing is really around collections and NPAs, right? So again, this is a, it's, it, it would be a folly to think that this is just a payment product. It is a loan and it requires collections. And India is a collections heavy uh, country, whether you do it on digital collections, tele collections or feet on street. And so I think uh, as good as underwriting models can be, uh, collections has to be played out and collections has to be critical. And so those companies that are able to kind of keep their NPS to the sub 2% are ultimately going to be the winners in this space. Yes, absolutely. Uh, KYC is the key, uh, especially going forward, because I feel that this kind of, this segment is soon going to come under the RBI's embed. At least there would be some light touch regulation coming very, very soon to this segment. Um, I want to ask a question to Sabisachi next. Uh, Sabisachi, if you can comment on the challenges, um, whether technological challenge, financial or cybersecurity or any other kind of challenge which is disrupting the demand supply balance in this segment of PNPL. Sure. Um, it's a very interesting question, uh, Richard. Thanks for asking that. Well, in the current times that we are in, it is definitely a phase of uh, rise of fraudsters as well. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure all of us uh, had heard about uh, in the recent time, the Jamtara cases, the UPI frauds, etc., which have been making rounds and noise. But that said, I think the businesses uh, have to and will be flourishing while circumventing such challenges. On the technology and cybersecurity front, I think there are tools available. Uh, though they are not the best and obviously fraudsters uh, stay a little ahead of technology, I believe. But uh, we have the best minds in the country who are continuously working on this on an ongoing basis. Uh, perhaps uh, I would say the main challenge as I see uh, personally uh, at this point for all the BNPL players, is kind of protecting customers from overuse across multiple providers, be it intentional or inadvertent. I think because these services can be easily accessed uh, by the very nature and uh, the providers currently cannot share data with each other, there's a significant risk of uh, users racking up uh, unaffordable debt. So we are at the industry infancy stage now and however, uh, it depends how we raise the child, uh, hugely dependent on managing fraud analytics and, and incorporating uh, flavors of traditional art underwriting, as Gaurav just said, uh, would, would play a big part. And uh, uh, see, I mean, I, I think uh, what I'm seeing, uh, there is a risk of digital fraud. It's a collection heavy country, as, as I said. Uh, but one of the largest uh, threats is account takeovers, in which uh, kind of process seize control of accounts and use them to access uh, like the data. So, and, and maybe even your PII. So I hope with the PDP law, some of these things uh, get in control, but uh, the ways to stop such fraud is also having an uh, robust uh, kind of uh, 
AI-based uh, models to assess the different data points with customer behaviors and authenticate those in real time. I think this is going to be a crucial piece in making this model sustainable, else there will be different challenges that each of the players will see. Thank you, Sabisachi, for um, those comments there. And yes, yes. Uh, I want to ask the next question to Pasna. Pasna, how has BNPL accelerated ease of doing business in financial services? Very relevant. Ease of doing business in financial services. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the framework of, uh, you know, how the binocular yeah. products have been built uh, in itself. Um, and, you know, at MobiQuick, we focus a lot more on consumer side and therefore consumer related buy now, pay later. But I'm sure there are companies in the sector which are focusing on the business side and specifically on the SME gap uh, of credit as well, where they are introducing these products. But I think from uh, ease of doing business perspective, I think the largest uh, benefit a buy now, pay later product has brought to the market overall is just the convenience of how quickly uh, a user or even a small merchant can get onboarded and can get access to this uh, credit line kind of product. And what that means is at the time of checkout, whether it is a point of sale checkout or whether it is an online checkout, you know, the transaction rates and the conversions are going through. So ultimately, you know, it is bringing more business uh, and more convenience uh, to the customer as well as you know, the, uh, the, the provider um, where the product is being uh, uh, purchased. I think those, uh, and the simplicity in which this product has been built is therefore also influencing everybody in the sector, you know, to look at it, that there is a huge takeoff in buy now, pay later. And so everybody is also, else is also trying to f uh, forget, uh, figure out that previously we had these uh, very long, uh, you know, flows with like six, seven uh, layers of uh, data being asked, whether it is a small merchant loan or a consumer loan. And uh, given how simplistically the buy now, pay later product and onboarding has been built by almost all the players in the market, is there a way that, uh, you know, all these other companies are also trying to bring the same kind of uh, onboarding experiences in otherwise very long uh, credit journeys? Thank you, Pasna. I'll move on to some of the questions that I've been receiving from the audience. Uh, first question is that uh, the RBI Working Committee report, one inf inference from the recommendation points towards stoppage of NBFC renting and pushes more of its own balance sheet lending. How has that impact been seen on BNPL till now? Um, so Bisachi, do you want to take this question? Uh See, I mean, I, I think Gaurav or uh, Upasna would be the right person to comment on this uh, sure. more from an operational perspective, but let me take an attempt. I I, I think, uh, I mean, it, it is too early. It has just happened uh, kind of uh, late last year uh, kind of thing. So the impact has still uh, not seen on ground. But what I think is, um, as it is, if you talk of the uh, large banks, uh, which Amol was mentioning, they are also trying to enter into this space. Uh, so I think I would see more of partnerships coming up and, and that will kind of take off, uh, in, in, at least in the near future, before a stable model is being built out. Uh, I, I mean, I would limit my comment there because there are different risks with probably the regulator seeing the global trend are trying to see. I mean, I, I have seen US, mm -hmm. UK, Australia coming back very heavily. I've seen uh, Sweden passing a e-com payments bill. I've, I've seen very recently uh, Capital One uh, banning its credit card users from using it on BNPL. Uh, I have also seen social players like uh, TikTok uh, kind of updated its brand content policy. So all of this, which, which actually uh, makes like what pay kind of players who are uh, actually were using influencers to kind of promote their products cannot be used. So I think a lot of reforms will happen from an Indian regulatory perspective. So as BNPL players who operate in this market and economy, I think they have to gear towards, got a very nicely put that, that it is not a payment product and it is an underwriting product. You have to be taking cognizant of that fact and do all the underwriting due diligence that has to happen. So I think as soon as the players can kind of 
streamline their operations to that quickly i think the regulators will gain more confidence and will maybe ease out eventually i think sure thank you uh, gorav do you have any additional comments to this question yeah i think uh, you know the word rent and ndfc itself scares me a little bit right <laughs> <laughs> either you want to lend lend on your own books or get a bank license or get an nbfc and figure it out or do a co lending model as you said with a with a bank right the minute you go down this rent and nbfc model it means that you don't want to take any loans on your balance sheet you don't take any assets on your balance sheet and it may seem like a very investor friendly option uh, but at the end of the day i don't think again the regulator is going to look very kindly on that and I, and and should not as well right uh, there are many fly by night operators as we seen in the whole Chinese lending scam that happened about a year ago, and so my hope is that the regulator comes in quickly, and we don't see that spoiling the binopulator market. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I have one very interesting question. Um, it says, "What are the challenges in BNPL uh, from uh, from as of today? As uh, it, there is a lot of scope, as has been you know mentioned by all the panelists. So, are there any specific challenges also in BNPL?" Yeah, I think the biggest, if I can take that, the biggest is going to be NPS, right? I think the product is still taking off for most players, and if people are not able to control NPS, like uh, it's it's going to not only put the customer in a dead trap, but also obviously companies, and then and and the scale at which BNPL is going can start to become a systemic issue as well. So, NPA management, risk management, uh, even though people may think it's a payments product, it's a credit product, I think that mindset is critical to manage risk. Mm -hmm. any additional comments from you pasna yeah no i think gorav is bang on i think um, you know npa management or credit loss management is very important because otherwise you know how do you make money uh, the ultimate uh, reason to build a business is to actually make a profit and i think uh, we definitely you know work and operate uh, in that model i think one of the other challenges to think about is that uh, uh it's a very large market you know very few uh, indians actually have credit and i think the other problems here are that you know what kind of buy now pay later products you want to offer and i think uh, and how many people do we want to offer it so you know of course a business can be built on offering buy now pay later let's say to a few million users with a higher ticket size but then there are also plays where people you know want to acquire many more users and offer a uh, gradient different uh, ticket size products to different users so i think uh, user acquisition cost of user acquisition and also uh, you know like we mentioned uh, it's after all uh, you know credit product and not just a convenience product and so therefore where do you get the data to understand the user that who is credit worthy and what is the right limit uh, for one user versus the other so i think uh, if we think about long term scale uh, definitely uh players who have scale on the user front and therefore on the kyc on the credit information about those users will definitely have an advantage and i think those are some of the problems that uh, younger and earlier stage fintechs uh, you know will face as they try to come out of a niche and try to scale it up rapidly uh there is a question from the audience it's saying is the bnpl data shared to credit bureaus once the user register and uh, how is the soft credit hits the credit score yeah, so if i could uh, start i think there are all kinds of players in the market i definitely believe that uh, you know all the large uh, and credible players in the market uh, you know including my co panelists i think we all report it so whether a user has taken a 500 rupee credit line or a 30000 rupee credit line it's a credit product it must be reported to the bureau and if there is non performance or default that needs to be reported as well i do think that there are quite a few players who are taking liberties there and not treating it uh, as a credit product which is actually bad for the market and the entire ecosystem i'll i'll just uh, pose last question to amol which is coming from the audience uh, amol what do you think are the possible actions to uh, promote bnpl amongst the users or also to gain their trust as well so again simple uh, things uh, having a simple transparent uh, product uh, coupled with customer education i think that's the best way uh, uh, to really uh, take this to the masses uh, and of course diversifying use cases i mean that's i mean there's no magic bullet there's no third thing that these are just simple things you need to do right 
Sure. Thank you, Amol. And I think we are very much in time. With that, I draw close to the session. I want to thank the Interf Festival of India, Amit, and to all my panelists, Amol, Gaurav, Sabbisachi, and Upasna. It was a wonderful discussion. And of course, had we had more time, it would have gone further. Thank you to all and good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Richa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richa, and uh, many thanks to all of our panelists for taking time out from their busy schedule to join us today. Uh, with this, it is time to move on to our next session, which is an innovation talk. To join us for the next session, click on the agenda page on the platform and select the next panel discussion, which is on embedded fintech and its advantages for MSMEs. Uh, we will see you in a minute. सेट अप और ट्रेडिंग शुरू हाँ कर सकते हैं नहीं कर सकते लगी शर्त और हार हार तो इट्स पॉसिबल विद कॉइन स्विच को बेयर डाउनलोड करो और बिटकॉइन ट्रेडिंग स्टार्ट करो कॉइन स्विच को बेयर सिक्का चमकेगा क्रिप्टो करेंसीज़ नॉन रेगुलेटेड डिजिटल एसेट नॉट लीगल टेंडर एंड सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क एंड प्राइस फ्लक्चुएशन रिस्क वेयर देर इज लाइफ देर इज होप � Life is about challenges. Life is about opportunities. Time for joy, time for celebration, and time to introspect. Thankfully, in every one of life's moments, and even beyond life itself, there's LIC. Where there is life, there's always LIC. Zindagi ke saath bhi, zindagi ke baad bhi. Where there is life, there is hope. Welcome to Fago, a pioneer in the world of intelligent open finance. With our full stack open finance platform, we enable companies to understand their users' financial behavior across various use cases, making finance engaging and actionable. Fago's developer-friendly product stack helps clients with friction-free user onboarding and authentication using trusted account information. 
Connect and aggregate your users' banking transaction data from any source, either any of the account aggregators or directly from any core banking solution at flexible intervals. Enrich and categorize transaction data using machine learning algorithms to extract deep behavioral attributes of your users. Understand and act on real-time insights powered by your user's behavior for a variety of use cases ranging from lending, wealth, income verification, frauds, to even branding and marketing insights. Engage with your users by embedding our personal finance management SDK in your existing user-facing app to push positive financial habits and personalize financial insights to your users. If you are looking to engage or understand your user base's financial behavior to take informed decisions, Fago is your perfect partner. With the complete Fago suite, you can now capture what drives your users at every stage of their journey and use it to drive your growth. Plug into Fago and let us do the heavy lifting for you.